Hello everyone, I'm Chad. I'm Ben. We are coming to you from the Golf Leadership Academy. And for those of you who have been there, or been here, pardon me, you know that we coach using principles. Uh, for those of you who haven't been here, if you come here, we coach using principles. So one of the principles that we use is commitment to one thing during the swing. We're relentless with it. We don't compromise. We can't compromise on this principle of commit to one thing. And today we'd like to give you some insight into why is that one of our principles. So Ben, why is it so important, man? And why do we uh, not let anybody off the hook? Yeah, so the commitment to one uh, thing principle is extremely important because there's a couple uh, parts of your brain that you need to use efficiently when you go play golf. So we're gonna talk about a couple of those pieces right now. So uh, if you could all maybe reflect for a second on what it's like when you play your best golf, I think the answers that we would all get are very similar. So I'm gonna ask Chad really quick. Chad, the best round of golf you've ever played in your, in your life, what was it like for you from an internal experience? Uh, internally, I was calm, confident, uh, I was not worried about my swing at all, and I was exceptionally clear on what one thing I was going to do during this swing. So uh, one round in particular, I was only focused on the inside part of the ball, and I stayed in that lane for the entire day and was under par for the whole day. It was, it was great. So that day in particular, it was uh, those things. Quiet, calm, confident, and focused on what I was going to do. Beautiful. So you sound like a lot of other high-performing athletes, right? So I think if, uh, you know, a lot of times we've listened to even Tiger Woods talk about what it's like in his performance state, right? And I think a lot of times what we hear from people like Tiger is he can tell you uh, what it was like to prepare for the shot that he was about to hit. So there's an extreme amount of visualization that's going into the shot. But if you ask Tiger what it's like when he's swinging the golf club in those moments, a lot of times he's going to tell us that he doesn't really remember. Doesn't know. No, he doesn't know. It's almost like a blackout experience. I've heard him say that he can feel the club head at yeah. all times during the swing. So there's an awareness there, but there's no explicit direction during the performance. Yeah, He's not breaking his swing up into bits and pieces, I can tell you that, right? Yeah. And here's why he can perform at that level. So if you look at our little brain board here, it's quite a it's beautiful artwork, Chad. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> there's a part of your brain called your prefrontal cortex. Your prefrontal cortex is basically where your intellect lies, where the conscious mind lives. Anytime you're thinking about something, that part of the brain is going to be engaged. So the, the conversation in your mind yep. is the prefrontal cortex. Is that true? You got it. Okay. So can we call that part of the, the brain the coach? That is the coach. Okay. You got it. Okay. Here's the problem with the coach. <laughs> it's not allowed on the playing field. <laughs> no. Coaches aren't allowed on the playing field. If the coach or the prefrontal cortex is engaged while you actually swing a golf club, the signal being sent to your muscles is now delayed and it's like rolling the dice in Vegas. You have no idea what numbers are gonna come up. You could shank it, you could chunk it, you could hit it out of bounds, you could hit an okay shot from time to time, but you're not putting yourself in position to have success at this point in time. To perform. You got it. Yes. So it's really important that we learn how to bypass that prefrontal cortex when we swing a golf club. Um, so Chad, talk to people a little bit about maybe what it's like uh, thinking versus sensing and, and what we can do to maybe get the prefrontal cortex bypassed while you swing a golf club. Yeah, so there, there's a lot of things. So basically being present through your senses, uh, being aware, a state of awareness, and paying attention is critical. Um, so you could feel your grip pressure. You could, in Tiger's case, he talked about feeling the weight of the club. You could feel your balance. You could simply swing the weight of the club. We talk about that all the time as another one of our principles. So having said that, uh, having a conversation about it during the swing is where the prefrontal cortex or the coach is then on the playing field and no good. So I could be talking about make sure I take the club back straight and make sure I turn my right shoulder behind the ball and I got to keep my pressure on my lead side coming down and keep my head down and, and hit a good shot. So if I'm thinking myself through that process, it's you're not, toast. It's toast. You're, you're not going to be able to repeat, repeat it. It's going to be an unathletic movement at best. And then people blame the technique, but they really have an internal commitment problem and a, an attentional it. control problem. You got it. All right. So what's up with the, the athlete, the blue over here? It's the motor system. The blue, the motor system. Here's the cool part is if you can learn how to bypass that prefrontal cortex where you swing the golf club, you have access to your motor system. And one of the pieces of the motor system is going to be your cerebellum. Your cerebellum has to do three things for you. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to give you access to your fast twitch muscles. The second thing it's going to do is it actually has to smooth out your motion for you. That helps. So for those of you who are looking for a smooth swing, stop thinking so much. So much. 
And then the third thing that it actually has to do is has to track how the body is moving relative to space and it will auto correct for you. Yeah, so it'll, it'll organize things in a way that you can't possibly think about. It's, it has its own processing speed, it's its own system, and it, it smooths out the motion, organizes the body in space, and fires the fast switch muscles. You, it yeah. does all those things? Yeah, it has to. It's you don't even get a choice. Is that good for golf? I mean, I would have to think so. <laughs> The other part of the motor system that you're going to have access to is your basal ganglia. Your basal ganglia is pretty unique. It's a, it acts like a savings account. So every time you guys are practicing and playing, you're hitting good golf shots, you're storing those shots in your basal ganglia. The fascinating part about the uh, basal ganglia is it acts like a savings account. So uh, to give you all an example of how it works, say you have $20,000 in a savings account, you go to the bank, you want to go get your money out of there. Imagine you go to the bank and the teller looks at you and she goes, oh, I'm really sorry, uh, I can only give you $100 today. And you would look at that person and be like, well, what happened to all my money? And they would look at you and say, well, guess what? You're thinking a little too much right now, so you only have access to 100 bucks. You're going to have to come back another time when you're not thinking so much. Hmm. That's what happens to our golf skills sometimes when we're out of the golf course. It's an interference problem. Yeah, so a lot of folks would ask us, why can I do it on some but not on the other? Why did I shoot 38 on the front nine and 48 on the back? It's complex. There's a lot of reasons that that's true. One of the main ones is sometimes you get out of your own way and sometimes you don't. And then people don't understand that there's uh, scientific reasons that this happens to them. So uh, when people start to understand this, and then start to understand the, the validity of commit to one thing and really stay the heck out of your own way. Uh, and then you experience you know, effortless swings, fast twitch muscles, the stuff organizes without you really understanding how that happens. Yeah, you got it. That's why a lot of times when you think about it, uh, the people that we talk to day in and out, you know, they have a couple adult beverages out on the golf course and all of a sudden they start playing better. But the reason that that happens is because they can finally get out of their own way. They're not thinking about the swing anymore. They're just having fun with their buddies and they're, they're basically seeing shot, hitting shot. Right. There's no emotional attachment to it. So they basically are allowing the cerebellum to do its job. It's funny when you mention alcohol. So like there's a fine line. So anybody <laughs> oh, who's yeah. done this, if you have a couple drinks, it will lower the activity in the prefrontal cortex or lower your inhibition. So this is what alcohol does. Having said that, if you drink too much, <laughs> it'll impair the motor system. And that's why. <laughs> it's a different issue. <laughs> and that's where it goes the other way on you. So if you've ever wondered why a couple drinks helps this, you know, fine line between Saturday night and Sunday morning. That's all I'll say. <laughs> all right, so we hope this helps you understand the back end of why this is so important. So the practical thing that you can do is learn to put your attention on one thing during the swing, and this will all take care of itself. But if you didn't know this was true, you'll end up frustrated, always searching for swing to swing to swing, and, and never really understanding what drives your performance. If anyone wanted to do a deeper dive into the subject, there's actually a great book out there. Uh, the name of it's called Simplicity by Stephen Yellen. So this is actually, uh, he's the one that we got a lot of this information from. So if you want to do a deeper dive into this and understand it more, we would highly recommend his book. It changed our golf games. He helped uh, take something that was complex and teach it to us in a simple way. And uh, this, this whiteboard presentation really, really helped us understand it. So and it helped a lot of our players too. So we hope this helps you. Uh, last week we talked about the commitment versus conflict. So this is a little bit more uh, deep understanding of, of what, what that is and why that's true. We hope this helps you. Uh, we thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.